Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jennifer Jenkins. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you two dishes. One of them is kind of a meal. Um, you can have it for lunch or for dinner. And then the other one is a dessert. And they are both so delicious. I don't think I've ever shown you guys a dessert on my channel, just because I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but this one is so good. I have to share it with you. The best thing about both of these dishes is that not only are they delicious, but you can overindulge on either one of these and you don't have to feel guilty about it. And I feel like that's what most of us wanna do, right? We wanna be able to eat as much as we want without having to worry about putting on weight. That's what I do anyway. And so, um, you know, you can do that with both of these to a certain extent, of course, you know, you know when to stop. Now, before I get started, I did wanna say that if you are uncomfortable with any of the ingredients that I'm gonna be sharing with you, um, for instance, if you don't like to eat things that are prepackaged or out of a can or processed or something like that, then, um, then just go ahead and substitute it for something that you are comfortable um, eating. I, I am very, I'm all about convenience, you know, and I like to just get in and out of the kitchen. I don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, but I know that some people have a problem with some of the things that I use because, you know, I might use, or I'm definitely gonna be using things out of a can today and prepackaged. So if you're uncomfortable eating, you know, corn out of a can or something like that, then go ahead and buy some corn and shuck it and then just, you know, substitute that ingredient. But you don't need to leave me a comment just letting me know that, you know, it's terrible for me or that I'm gonna die an early death or something like that. I already know that. So let's go ahead and jump in and let me share with you these two dishes. Okay, so these are the ingredients that you're gonna need in order to make this meal. Um, now, obviously, some of these ingredients are optional. It just kind of depends on your taste buds, but um, you know you can decide for that. So anyway, the first thing that you're gonna need is some extra lean ground beef. I got the 96% lean. Then you're gonna need some taco seasoning. You're gonna need some of this rice. Now, you don't have to choose this flavor. This is the one that I like to make this meal with. This is the Uncle Ben's Ready Rice, and it's the quinoa and brown rice with garlic. You just have to pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds. It's so convenient, and it's so delicious. Then you're gonna need some canned goods, and you're gonna need some gold and white corn, some diced jalapenos. This is obviously optional, just depending on you know what you prefer. Then you're gonna want a can of Rotel. This is the mild diced tomatoes and green chili. I have a can of beans here. Now, I have seen this meal prepared most often with black beans. However, I prefer either red kidney beans or like ranch style beans drained. So I'm gonna use these today. Then you're gonna need an avocado. Now these, I've never seen it made with the bell peppers, but that's how I prefer to make it. I, I like to chop these up, a red and a yellow bell pepper, just to give it just some extra flavor. I just like a medley of flavors and textures. So then I've got a purple onion because it's a little bit more strong and I really like the taste of a purple onion in this meal um, as opposed to like white or yellow. Then of course I have to have some light sour cream on it. Then you're gonna need some, you know, lettuce for your salad. And I have the romaine hearts right here and then I've got this organic spring mix. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna have as the base. So I'm going to get to chopping and then I'll show you now how I make this. Okay, so the meat is cooking here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a bag of the taco seasoning. Now I am making a lot of, um, of taco meat just because I can use it for several different types of meals. Now I went ahead and drained this rotel, and so I'm gonna go ahead and add that also. And then I'm just gonna mix it all together. Okay, so it looks like it's almost ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the heat and then just kind of set this meat aside. Okay, so here are all of the ingredients that are going to go in this bowl. Now, I did want to mention that I did heat up the beans, the quinoa rice, and the corn, and then I just kind of let it sit there because I don't want to be putting a bunch of hot ingredients over a bed of lettuce, you know? And I also let the meat sit there for a little while. Now, I kind of ran out of, you know, matching dishes. So I've got some little, just kind of cubed avocado over there. Now, I did want to mention, I have my salad in this bowl right here, um, just all the chopped up lettuce. And I am definitely going to link these bowls in my description box. They're giant mixing bowls. Y'all, this will keep a salad fresh 
for almost a full like five or six days. I am not kidding at all. Even if it has the, um, like this, I don't really know what that is, but um, even when it has the purple stuff that tends to kind of get slimy, it does not get slimy. You can even put cucumbers in this bowl and put it in the refrigerator and the cucumbers will not get watery or, you know, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, it just keeps your salads really, really fresh. My mother-in-law bought them for me and they are just incredible. I love them. So anyway, the way that I do this is I start with obviously some salad. It is a little bit wet because I did rinse the romaine. The other stuff was already pre-washed and so it's a little bit wet. Anyway, a bunch of lettuce on the bottom. Then I like to add the rice. I did want to mention that I did put a little bit of jalapenos in this rice just because, you know, like I said, I like to have a lot of flavor and I'm going to use all of this. This is probably, you know, about half of a bag um, of the rice. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some beans. Now you don't have to use all of it. I always just kind of eye it and I never do it like this, obviously. This is just for <laughs> for filming. Then I'm going to add my corn. Now I do not heat my bell peppers and onions. I like them raw. You can heat them. I just prefer them nice and crunchy and raw and I like a lot. Like I'm just going to go ahead and put all that in there. And then of course you top it with your beef. Isn't that just looking so beautiful already? It's so colorful and it's so delicious. It is just like bursting with flavors. And then of course, I have to have avocado on everything. That's about half of a small, you know, avocado. And that's probably enough. And then I'm definitely gonna be adding some sour cream to this. Now I usually do my sour cream per bite. So, um, so I'm just gonna leave that on the side. And then I also have this salsa right here. I just picked it up at Walmart and it's a cilantro salsa. It's got tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and jalapenos. And I might use that on the side also. I just kind of, you know, I'm gonna taste it, see what I think, and then I'll add, you know, more flavors if it's necessary. Okay, so this is the final product. I should have placed the avocados just perfectly around the bowl, right? Um, but doesn't that look so good? So delicious, so colorful, so, so filling. And I don't feel guilty about eating it because the ground beef is lean and then I'm using light sour cream. I'm using a ton of vegetables. You know, I, I guess the only thing that's kind of a little bit fattening would be the avocado, but it's, it's good fat. So it's good for our bodies and we obviously need some fats so that our, so that our bodies can digest vitamins and, you know, nutrients and stuff like that. So anyway, um, this is what I'm having for dinner tonight, probably with some sour cream and maybe with a little bit of this. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go take in. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to dessert. Y'all, this has got to be one of the coolest, easiest desserts ever. And you're gonna thank me for it. I hope you haven't heard of it yet. Um, so anyway, it's called a soda cake. All you're gonna need is a box of cake and a soda. And that's it. However, I'm adding a couple more ingredients and I'll tell you why in a minute. So what you're doing basically is you're just replacing the half cup of oil and the three eggs with a can of soda, a 12 ounce can of soda. And it seems to just cook it just like a cake. Now it doesn't come out the exact same way as a cake. It's real kind of airy and fluffy and it's moist also, it's very moist, but it's not as dense, I think, as um, as just a regular cake. Somebody did say that if you added, I, I was reading the comment section on you know one of these cakes, and somebody said that if you add a half cup of applesauce, that it makes it a little bit more dense, but I don't even feel like it's necessary. It is still so good. I don't care if it crumbles a little bit whenever I'm spooning it. It's so good, you just, got, you just have to wait. So anyway, um, but you're saving, all the fat, you're not, you know, you're not having to add all the fat because you're not adding the oil or the eggs. So anyway, you can use diet soda if you like. This is not diet soda. You can use any soda. So depending on what flavor you want, you can even use club soda if you don't want to change the flavor at all. But um, so you can use club soda. You can use any soda, Coke, orange, strawberry, whatever. You can use diet soda also. I want to say that Weight Watchers put out one where they just have cake and a diet soda. And um, and it just, it's unbelievable how good it tastes. Now, the only reason I did not decide to use um, a diet soda is because of the aspartame. Aspartame, I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, I didn't wanna use that. Not that it's that bad if you just, you know, 
ingest it occasionally. This is not something, hopefully, I mean, unless you're somebody that eats dessert every single day, um, then I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna hurt you too bad. But just to avoid that altogether, I decided to use a seltzer. And what I, I've got the coconut limeade seltzer. And, um, and then because this has no sugar, no, you know, no artificial sugar and no regular sugar, I am gonna add a little bit of stevia. I'll show you how I do it in a minute. And I am gonna add some blueberries. So you guys are just gonna die. This is so good, especially because I eat it with Cool Whip. Oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this does not get any more simple. All you're gonna do is empty your cake mix, empty your soda. Watch how it kind of fizzes up, it's kind of cool. Now I'm adding an entire bag of frozen blueberries. And then I'm adding two heaping tablespoons of stevia. And then you're just gonna take a whisk and you're gonna whisk that all together. Now, the first time that I did this, I actually just put the blueberries um, in the bottom of the cake pan and then just poured this over it but all the blueberries wanted to settle on the bottom. So I've never actually done it like this, adding the blueberries to the actual cake batter. So um, I didn't know it was gonna turn purple like this, but I'm sure it's still gonna be really delicious. Now you don't even have to be that particular as far as like mixing it really well. You just have to kind of blend it together. And so I'm just gonna pour it into this greased baking dish. Hope you guys can see that. And you can eat the cake batter raw because there's no eggs. <laughs> oh my God, that cake batter is so delicious. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, the last time I just put the blueberries on the bottom because I've seen it done that way, but I felt like all the blueberries just wanted to settle at the bottom and I didn't like that. So I've never seen it purple like this, but I know it's gonna taste just as good. I just tasted the batter and it's so delicious. So anyway, I'm gonna pop this in the oven for um, 40 to 45 minutes on 350. Okay, so this right here is what it looks like directly out of the oven. It is still hot. I don't even wanna touch that glass because I can, I can tell it's still super hot. But I just wanted you to see that rise, how much it rises just like a regular cake, even though we didn't use oil or eggs. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? This looks like it's gonna be so good. And it's not purple after all. I'm surprised, I thought it was gonna be purple. It looks more like chocolate chip or something. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit. I'm gonna let it cool. And then I'm gonna cut a slice, uh, top it with some whipped cream, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, y'all, check this out. Look how delicious that looks. I already ate a piece. I ate it when it was kind of fresh out of the oven. It was piping hot. Y'all, it tastes like the most blueberry tasting blueberry muffins you've ever had. You could literally put butter on it and it would be so good. I actually put some whipped cream on mine. Now I did wanna mention that I left this in the oven for 45 minutes. I actually went to the store. Um, I thought that I was getting back before the timer was gonna go off. The timer went off right when I walked in the door, but I don't know if it had already gone off, but I love it this way. The top is a little bit kind of crispy and I just prefer it. I feel like the cake holds better together this way. Um, now the blueberries did end up settling on the bottom again. Some of them were still at the top. So I guess you could make it either way. Um, this one makes the batter look a little bit more purple and it comes out a little bit more brown. The other one stayed really, really white. And um, the other one I actually left in for 35 minutes. And although it was moist and really fluffy, I prefer it with a little bit of a crispy top. So anyway, um, I have some Cool Whip on the top there. This is fat free. It's Ready Whip. It's made with real cream. It says no artificial flavors or sweeteners. It says no artificial growth hormones. <laughs> okay, I would have never expected it to have growth hormones. Anyways, it has five calories per serving. Each serving is two tablespoons. It's got less than 
one gram of sugar. So that one's pretty good. That one makes a better display, but as you can see, it's already kind of softening up and kind of getting a little bit runny. Now I actually prefer this one. This is Cool Whip in a Tub. It's zero sugar and it just has the consistency of almost ice cream, like a really, really creamy ice cream to me. And it's zero sugar. Now either one is a good option and whichever one you choose, you're still gonna feel you know, you're still not gonna feel guilty about eating it, right? And so, yeah, look at that, so delicious. I hope you guys make it and try it because you're gonna love it, you'll thank me for it. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I'm gonna have, you know, instructions and all that good stuff in my description box below this video. I did wanna say, I was not able to finish that entire um, quinoa, taco meat salad bowl. Is that what it's called? Um, it was just entirely too much. And you guys saw how much I prepared myself. I think I had a little bit more than a quarter left over. Um, it's just so filling and it's so, so delicious. Now I did want to mention that my daughter likes to eat it and sometimes I will eat it this way also. We like to crush um, baked corn tortilla chips over the top and eat it that way. It's really good. It adds a little bit more texture. And then of course, eat it with sour cream and, um, and salsa. Um, it's just so good. I hope you guys try it. But um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. Anytime you swing by and watch one of my videos or you know support my channel in any way, it just means so much to me and I'm so grateful for you. So thank you so much. And um, I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and hopefully I will see you back here next week.